With me this evening is the Prime Minister and the Vice President, the Honorable Moses Nagamutu, and we're going to have an update on the budget 2015 and his views and where do we go as a country and with the new government in place from here. Well, thank you, you sir. Thank you very much. Uh, with the new budget being approved, uh, we have now at our disposal the full amount of monies that ought to have been allocated for 2015 from January 1st to December 31st. So some of that money has already been spent, as you know, from January to August had been monies that were spent uh, before the approval of the budget, most of that by the previous government. So we had to, strangely enough, and it may look funny, we had to justify even some of the illegal and uh, objectionable spendings uh, of the past government. But we wanted to go forward. We, di we didn't want to live in the past. So we are hoping now that uh, from here on, we don't have to wait until March or April or May in a month to bring a budget. We are hoping that we can get a budget now that could be presented within the first month of the year. So a new 2016 budget will be on its way. And all those uh, uh, programs in the 2015 budget, which had not been approved, uh, implemented will now be rolled over into the new year. In other words, we are expecting that we probably will have a bigger budget. We'll probably have more money uh, to finance uh, a greater number of projects. So I am very optimistic that um, we have uh, come this far and um, showed Guyana that we have the political will, not only in difficult situations to keep our promises to the electorate. As you know, we had the 100-day uh, promise, which we said we had, we had fulfilled to a large extent. Those that have not been fulfilled in terms of a promise, we are working on, on, on those, to complete those. So you will constantly uh, expect us to return to you, uh, the Guyanese people, to report to you what we are doing about those uh, uh, promises that we have made. On the other hand, there are some major projects that will be undertaken, which have been earmarked in the 2015 budget, and which is rolling over into next year, 2016. And so we'd hope to have a stimulus in the economy. We hope to create more jobs for young people. We are hoping to uh, open up training facilities, those uh, 1,900 Amerindian uh, youths who were uh, being paid stipend to do political work, we are now going to give them stipends to enter into a training school so that they can have life skills and they can have what you call sustainable livelihood, not living on a dole, not living on a handout, not being treated as if they are uh, begging the state for a pocket piece uh, every month. So uh, we hope that uh, we will see some of these big projects uh, coming on stream to open up lands, to create housing schemes, to uh, uh, deliver uh, uh, better on promises to help sugar workers, help rice farmers find markets. These are things that we're going to do. What has happened in the last uh, couple of days we have been in the government is that we have been able to show people what is the true character of this government. This is a government that is a no-nonsense uh, um, uh, group of people working day and night and day and night to deliver promises, to deliver projects, to deliver uh, things that will satisfy the needs of the Guyanese people. Look at how many pensioners are now smiling. Because they never thought that they would have gotten $17,000 a month in pension. Look at how many school cleaners are smiling. Because they didn't think anybody would have even remembered them that they existed and they are working for measly salaries. Look at the social uh, needs people who are giving an additional, who got a child in school, person without a leg, person without eyesight, person without uh, any income whatsoever. We have decided that they should be uh, taken care of. Look at many children going over to the schools in Berbice, in New Amsterdam from West Berbice, who have to use the Berbice River Bridge. They pay less. It is a daily 
uh, a crossing and therefore every day they had to fork out a little bit more. We are hoping that we could be able to get the minivans and the cars to lower the prices so that the people can benefit from the lowering of, of the toll. And look at the many people who are now going to the gasoline pump and the diesel pump and they're getting less, they're paying less for diesel at the pump. It must impact, it must mean something because when fuel is cheaper, it means that the cost of living goes down. You take fuel to, to make products, to manufacture, and we are hoping that all of these things can be rolled over into benefits for the Guyanese people to ease the burden. Look at the housewives going into Bounty and some other supermarket, and they can pick up some sausages and they pick up some chow mein and they can pick up some goods that are no longer attracting a vat. Each cent counts, each dollar counts. And at the end of the day, uh, so many people will be uh, uh, saving uh, 680 million dollars out of the uh, enlargement of the basket of goods that would be uh, free from uh, any VAT. So we showed our character, we showed the Guyanese people that we mean business and we are here to work for you. Look at me. I have been in a campaign non-stop for seven months. I haven't had a rest, I haven't had a vacation. Uh, I'm here on the grind day and night day in, day out, and I'm here as your servant. I'm here working for the Guyanese people. And so we have decided now, while the budget was being considered, we decided to extend the parliament. Parliament usually goes in recess from August 10th to October 10th under the PPP government. The PPP government <laughs> ministers go on two months leave, for which they're given a free plane ticket for themselves and their wives. And some children under 18 as well, they get what you call a travel allowance so they can go on a cruise. We have decided to cut one month of that uh, recess that was stated in, in our standing orders, stated in the rules of the parliament, that you shut it down for two months. We are not shutting down the parliament because we are coming back here now for local government elections in December. So we're not going to have any rest. We'll just go out there and perhaps attend to uh, our business, speak to the people in the diaspora, and uh, update uh, them what we are doing, going into the countryside, and update our people on what is happening in Guyana. Because a lot of distortion is taking place. And we have to, to want to deal with all these distortions. Because if you don't know the facts, you will say, hey, our government is not talking to us. So we're going to be using the holidays to to talk to you and we'll be coming back uh, in, in October, early October and recommence the sitting of the parliament to start passing some of the laws we have not been able to pass and also to start preparing the way for local government elections where we can hand power to the grassroots people, to ordinary people, so they can run their communities, they can run their own affairs, and the government is going to make sure that they have a subvention, they have financial assistance. So this is the way forward as I see it. Uh, a very exciting path ahead of us, but at the same time, we are not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be very rough, and that is why, in the people's interest, I've been talking in Parliament about something called bipartisan cooperation. We are talking about how to cooperate with the opposition. I would like to engage Jack Dale in a conversation, a serious conversation, a series of conversation on what we could do to work together. Forget the elections and the politics. You see, they are vexed with me because they think that Moses Nagamutu left the PPP and look what Moses has done. Moses threw them in the opposition. <laughs> but that's probably where these guys belong, in the opposition, because they manipulated the process to put themselves in office. And today they're trying to focus on Nagamutu. You know, for example, last year the, pri the Prime Minister, they voted $23 million to buy uh, a four-wheel vehicle so that Prime Minister Sam Hines could, could go to Linden, he could go to uh, Barbisi, he could go to Esekubo, he could go to the Rupununi if he wants, he could go to Madia if he wants. And do you know what happened with the $23 million? They took the money out of the man's budget and finance minister Ashley Singh bought a $19 million uh, Toyota Cruiser for himself. He traded in one of the finance ministry vehicle 
I bought a car and he bought another pickup. So he got three vehicles. Three vehicles which we had to recover. But not one was given to the Prime Minister. When I became Prime Minister, all I got is some broke down vehicles in the yard of the Prime Minister. The house broke down. I can't live in the Prime Minister residence. I'm living in my own home. I've been living there since 1985. They got big holes, craters, pothole. When I went there and, and this new government fixed up the pothole quickly, Jack Dave and then said, oh gosh, Moses living in posh environment. When all these years, they decided they're not going to fix that street. When we decided that we got to repair after 23 years, this, the house where the prime minister used to live, they got on the roof, they got plastics and so on on the roof catching water. The furniture disappear. The beds are horrible. No one can sleep on those things. I found stinking rats in the kitchen. We are trying to repair it. They said, hey, look, Moses, as prime minister, is now living a Cadillac style living. They want me to drive around Guyana in a jackass cart. They want me to live in the Prime Minister's residence sitting on a pira. They want to show Guyanese people that they could attack the image and the character of Moses Nagamutu. This whole campaign is about how to destroy Moses Nagamutu. But you're smarter than that. You know why they're doing this. You know why they have decided to personalize the politics. One is because of their racism. They don't want to work with the other people of this country. And two, they realize that Nagamutu in a government will stand up against all of those who were corrupt and will see that justice is done and that they'll have to account for all the missing vehicles. They'll have to account for all the missing property because we set up systems to deal with that. But next year, of course, will be challenging as well. While we can say these things that are causing minor irritations and problem among our people, we must not lose sight of the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that we want cooperation. Venezuela has claimed five-eighths of our country. They're trying to block us from getting oil. If we got oil, everybody here will be a millionaire. This country will be so rich. You'll be amazed. You have never dreamt of a country that has got oil re revenue, oil resources. For generations to come, we could be rich. Venezuela is blocking us. But our opposition is not condemning Venezuela's aggression. Our opposition is too busy condemning us, cussing us down, this APNU AFC government that you know has done so much already for you. But we want unity, and we want to be able to have a new constitution or a revised constitution next year. At least the process must start so that you know that you have a government uh, whose leaders you can trust. We want to be able to bring anti-corruption laws so that we can tell people that our government ministers are above board, that they're declaring their assets, and that we can find out everything about where they get money from, the gifts they take, whether they take money under the table, and they have not only to be accountable, we will get rid of those people who are corrupt. So we want a new political culture in Guyana. We want what we call the good life. And so next year is going to be a better year for all of us. Um, once we go through this hump of uh, dealing with these uh, initial problems we inherited, have not been able to find resources, enough money. Uh, a lot of people are not really helping our government. Every day we're discovering people who still feel that the old regime is there. And they're holding back on their loyalty to this new government. And so therefore, we want to constantly appeal for the support of the Guyanese people. And that is why we are talking to, to you today, so that you know that your new government is there for you, but you also have to play your role to show your willingness to support and cooperate with your new leaders.